Nugent, uh, WOWT TV here in Omaha. Uh, Rich Wallace was the first guy off the bus yesterday. Uh, a bit of a homecoming for him. Can you explain what he has done for your team this year, the, the value he's brought? Well, he's multidimensional. I, I think he's a lot like the guys that just spoke to you. Um, when you're recruiting at Notre Dame and you're asked to take the program and hire a staff, this is a national quest to find students that are capable of getting into Notre Dame. And then you could layer in the baseball talent that's required to play at this level. That's a rare combination that we have to find. And it's not a state by state because we're a state school, we're a private school. This is a national hunt for players. Then you have to actually get them because you know what? The other seven teams in this event are probably recruiting some of the same guys. So that's where it started for Rich. And the recruiting is the lifeblood of, of what programs are about. You have to have talented athletes in the program if you think you're going to have a chance to, to win at this level. Um, from a coaching standpoint, he's great with the catchers. Phenomenal. Um, you know, he coaches third base, which has its – ebbs and flows of how often you have to make tough decisions. He handles that. Um, he's latched on to what my offensive philosophies are, my defensive philosophies. The data and analytics that are available to us right now, every pitch that's thrown in the stadium probably provides 100 data points just from one pitch um, when that ball's hit. So you have the pitch and the result of the swing. Um, the defensive alignments, the scouting report information, the video presentations that we'll go through tomorrow with these guys on Hanson and the relievers that we'll see, that's what this has turned into. And he handles that beautifully. And having worked at the event as a coach at Creighton, he was involved in this. So I've leaned on him just to have the right template for what we were doing today. It's a complicated day, and he's got a feel for it. So the layers that he provides our program with in, in an expert manner have helped change what we're doing. Okay. Mike? Uh, Michael Presti, NCAA.com. Mike, how hard is it for a northern team to get here? Well, um, you know, you have to have – you have to have the ability to adapt to your situation at the specific northern school you're coaching at. I've had to change how I practice, when we practice, where, why, how long, how you do your preseason. The fall is probably the only thing that I could take my schematics for how I did it before and do it here. Um, but the preseason is totally different. So you better digest what facility capabilities you have, how to use it, how is the time best spent. Um, we didn't step outside until Friday night at Stetson. So we went the whole preseason and we were never outside. And I'll be honest with you, we might have played our best that weekend. Like it was phenomenal the way they played right out of the gate. I'm just telling you. So being creative with what you're doing training-wise to prepare them. If you're not, you're not going to get out of the gates and be real good. If you don't get out of the gates and get into the ACC that we have to deal with, you're not going to have a good look at getting into a regional if you don't take care of business on the front end and compete like crazy in the league. It's just not going to happen. So when I got here, Pivoting them into the mindset that when you get off the bus on February 15th and you play that Friday game, that game might be the difference in what happens on that selection Monday. And when I said it to the team, it was, a, it was the first time I think they realized what I was trying to do with the program from day one. Um, how to handle the travel. We play five weeks on the road, sometimes six out of the gate. Our first three ACC trips were um, at NC State, at Louisville, and at Florida State. That's what you're staring at right out of the gate. 
Virginia Tech was coming to us. The weather allowed us to play Friday night. We probably shouldn't have. It was not playable. So we didn't – they had to leave Saturday morning. We, there was no thought of playing the other game. So our – those were our first ten ACC games. If you're not ready to go and the front-end games haven't seasoned you enough, get you ready, look at, look at what you could be staring at before you ever play a home game. So is it hard? Probably. Can it be done? Absolutely. You just have to be ready out of the gate and be really creative with how you train them. The season with five ACC road series and five home, at some point the pendulum will swing back to give them a little rhythm of what it's like to play at home. This is trip 13. So they've been through it, and obviously we can do it. I think Michigan proved that a few years ago. Um, maintaining it goes back to the previous question on can you recruit the right people, can you train the right way, and can you manage the game to put them in position through that long haul to be in the conversation to get into a regional. You have to, you have to put yourself in position to get in. If you're not in that position, all of this is meaningless. Like there's no, you're not even in the discussion. Okay, Tyler. Tyler Horka, Blue and Gold Illustrated. Link, obviously you were here last year watching your son. I'm just curious what it was like sitting there. Obviously you, you want him to win so badly, but part of you probably is thinking, man, I want to be here myself really badly, and you were really close last year. Now that you were on that field today on the other side of the net, coaching up your guys, what has the last year been like, and, and what is it like to finally realize it and, and you're coaching in the College World Series? I thought – I was going to be coaching against him in this last year. Um, tough. Tough exit for them to sit there and watch that. Awful. Um, so what you thought was the most monumental moment as a player for them turned into the worst outcome you could ever envision happening as, a, as an athlete. That was tough. So um, I don't know that I'll be able to put perspective on how I feel right now. Like I know when we're out on the field, like I got to prepare. Like there's things we're trying to get through today that will determine the outcome of the national championship. So um, – but when he gets here tonight and we're going through the opening ceremony, does he want to walk on the field tonight? With us, I don't, I don't know. Like those are, those are things last year that happened to him and the team that, that's tough. So, I just want him to be at peace with what happened, and he got them here. Now he's just got to enjoy, kind of watching these guys, and he knows these guys. He doesn't know them like he knows his team, but he knows them, so he'll enjoy it. But there's only one guy that'll truly be able to feel this and put it behind him, and that's JT. Okay, right here. Daily, John Bryce, Irish Sports Daily. You've talked about this being your team's 13th trip. I think you've got 23 wins already this season away from home. Do you almost feel like you guys have as much or more routine away from home <laughs> than you do at home? We better, John. Um, I, you try to create what it's like to do it the right way on the road, and then you try to create the right way to do it at home. Like So, again, you, you have to be really good in both instances to have a chance to be in the discussion for, for any sort of postseason stuff. So we have to be really comfortable. And the thing about it is early – when it's all road, 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 it, it allows you to come up with rhythm and things you want to do on the road. Once you, once you get through the travel and get to the hotel and start the process of preparing for the games, we do have a way that we like to do it. We also have a way we like to do it at home. So you, you have to really be good at figuring it out on the road. And then when it's time to – we had some series in a row at home late. Not, not a ton, but you do. And it just eases the burden of them and sitting in O'Hare, sitting in Midway, and sitting in Charlotte to wait for a, 
a flight. Um, and then Sunday, packing up the hotel and scrambling and playing the game and jumping and bussing somewhere and flying and getting to O'Hare at 11 o'clock and bussing two and a half hours back to the field. And you get you roll in the locker room at 1 or 2 in the morning. And sometimes that's four or five weeks in a row. So, yeah, you got to be good at both. And then piggybacking on that question, then, what makes a good road team or a team that's good away from home? And how much of your uh, road routine is applicable here this week? Yeah, well, well, all of it, really. Um, the timing of what you do before the game and where you go and the BP stuff, it's not going to be consistent across the board. It's just not. Like some days you're going to have to hit in the cages like in this event, and that happened um, in the regionals. Uh, so you just try to – once you count down, probably like football, like they, their itinerary probably has a list of this is what's happening three hours before the game, two hours before the game, one hour before the game, and you, you roll through it. So there is some commonality in what it feels like. Um, your first part of that was what? What makes a good road team? they have to focus on like the details of, of the game um, because all of the things going on around you and how the place plays and the people and the noise, um, you have to essentially whittle that down to the details of the competition. And that's really what matters the most. So the sooner they can get to that point in the first game on Friday, like they did in Knoxville, and just this is, it doesn't matter – Records, crowd, noise, can't hear, can't think. What matters is what's going on the field. So I think that's what it is. And being able to handle some adversity, right? You're going to handle some things on the road. It's just it's not your home field. So can you play through some of the things that inevitably happen um, in any of the games? But it seems like it probably happens a little bit more on, on the road, just the familiarity with the dimensions, how the surface plays, but you got you to play through it, and you can't let it snowball on you. I think that's why we got out of there in Knoxville is because we took some blows, right? They delivered, but it wasn't knockout-type blows. It was little punches along the way, and on the road, if you've been through it and can handle that, you have a chance to escape and get out of there. Okay, Mike. Michael Preston, NCAA.com. What memories do you cherish most of your own playing experience here? And, and as part of the trip last year or this year, do you, do you hop up to Rosenblatt, the, 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 the place up there that they still have a little of the diamond and kind of remember back at all? I mean, what, what do those memories mean to you at this point as a player? Um, well, two of my teammates flew from Key, one from Key West and one from Tampa to be at this. They're in my hotel. And – you remember the guys on the team. These guys that were here, they'll remember each other as much as anything that they'll do within the game, I think. I remember how badly at shortstop, when you're trying to close out these games, you just would hope there was a ground ball hit somewhere where you could field it and get it out. And you knew you were one out closer to winning a, a college world series game i remember that feeling and we talked about it in practice a lot like that taste of collecting the last six nine three outs of these games it's real and that intensity to figure out a way to run down a fly ball or pick up the bunt at a critical time and, and get an out the magnitude of trying to finish off a breaking ball, like feeling how important each one of those pitches are. That's what I'll remember the most. I, I can't remember. I mean, some of the hits and some of the plays I remember sporadically, but it's more the feeling of the guys on the team and then how badly you just wanted to do something to finish those games off. Okay. Uh, Mike Patterson. Coach Mike Patterson, Omaha World Herald. Can you tell us who your starter is going to be tomorrow night and uh, just talk about the challenge of playing Texas yeah. the first game? Bertrand will pitch. And to be honest with you, from what I've looked at with Hanson, I, I think you're going to see similar good lefties. Good. I mean, I think there's a lot of similarities. I, I, don't, I haven't seen him firsthand, but we'll go with Bertrand. And it's a good matchup. And it's, it's interesting that both of the lineups are a little right-handed heavy. There's a chance I – don't, I don't know exactly what they're going to do, but 
I mean, with our switch hitters in there, there's a lot of righties, and they have a ton of righties, and they've got some big Melendez and some of those guys. It is a potent, physical, right-handed hitting group. So Bertrand's secondary pitches are, you know, they're clearly going to have to be better than they were in Knoxville. And that fastball command, the margin of error when you're facing guys that are this physical and talented, it's diminished. Like, you can't live in the middle of that plate. So – I think looking at it from big picture, you have some similarities in the in the team. I think both guys do a good job fielding their position, controlling the running game. So you don't get to this point in the season unless you have those type of guys to run out there in these championship events. And I think you'll see some really, really well-played, well-pitched baseball. The ball was not carrying it all today. To think about what it was doing in Knoxville uh, and then to take batting practice here we didn't hit one ball out, no problem. But in Knoxville, I don't know how many home runs we hit, but it was like we were driving balls and so were they. So the dimensions and the way it plays, the grass, grab it grabs the ball. So that plays into the pitcher's hand, and you got two really good ones going at it. Okay, this will be our last question over here. Coach Jason Patterson, I on the College World Series. You, we've talked about it, been here as a player. You've been here as a dad a year ago and now as a coach. Can you just put into words for fans out there what it means to be here from whatever perspective because of what Omaha means to college baseball? How do you put into words, whether you come here as a dad, whether you come here as a player, whether you come here as a coach, yeah. what it means to be in Omaha on a week like this? When you say Omaha, I think the country knows exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. When you say Augusta, I, I think because it's in the same spot and – the community embraces it and continues to embrace it harder than when I played here. This has turned into a spectacle that would be right up there with some of the other great events. This weekend, as a parent last year, this weekend from seeing it from the outside of the stadium coming in, you don't really see that when you're on the inside of the stadium. right? You jump on the bus, you get here early, you come on in and you get out and you're like, there's a lot of people here. When you're outside as a parent, there's 10 times the people running around. So the spectacle of it, it's awesome. Um, and I enjoyed all three parts of it, like playing the, the tunnel vision of how do we get this done as a player. I don't think I was as aware of what was going on around me. I didn't really want to go get caught sitting somewhere for three hours trying to eat. I just wanted to do my thing and play and try to find a way to win. As a parent, this is great. We can go sit and eat all you want. He's in the cage. They're at practice. They're doing weightlifting. We'll see JT later. I, that was pretty fun. Now, I was not happy at the time because I was a couple days removed from losing to come here. So – that was fun for a little while, and then last year turned to not fun in a hurry for, for, for my son and for NC State. For JT, it was tough. That was, that was awful to go through that. Awful. Um, this, um, the intensity of, of this as a coach, I told our team, and I didn't want to make the moment too big, but I'd never seen a moment too big for him. I told him this will be the – the most contested, exciting series that college baseball has ever seen last weekend. I think it was. You had that group that had put themselves and separated from everybody else, and you had our group that I think people liked watching last year, and you, let's go see what this is. Maybe the two winningest teams in college baseball over the last few years. So the intensity of that um, was as immense as anything – you could deal with in coaching. The relaxation I felt when Brannigan fielded the ball, threw it to Miller, Miller threw it to Putts. I hadn't felt that as a parent or a player. I was watching them jump over the railings. They were coming from every angle to get out of the dugout on the field and dog pile. And I was the most relaxed I think I'd ever been to watch those guys go enjoy that. So – as a player, I was right in the dog pile. You felt differently as a player. As a parent, I was probably not the normal parent in this because of my job, but I tried to be. And then 
the coaching part, you know, just so calming and fulfilling to watch them move past what happened one year ago and see it in a place where I don't know how many people thought we were going to go in there and win. So t- three totally different feelings, all pretty special.